Hi, it's Gadget UK here. Um, another video on an Amiga 500, uh, well, it's a 500 plus this. Um, I'm anticipating probably it's going to be some battery leakage on this. Um, I'm not even going to test it, I'm going to take it to pieces before I do anything um, and just check a few things. But uh, I was fortunate enough, my parents actually picked this up for me off a car boot sale. And you can see that, £3. That's just uh, ridiculously good value. Um, and yeah, it's definitely a 500 plus. I, I, they originally told me it was a 500, I don't think they spotted it was a 500 plus there. So it's pretty yellowed, as you can see. Uh, might not come out of the camera very well, but trust me, it is. It's pretty yellowed. Um, but that's totally treatable with some hydrogen peroxide, so I'll probably do that um, afterwards once I've actually got this thing working. But if I just turn it over, uh, the interesting thing with this, you see, warranted to seal, totally untouched. So no one's ever been in this. This is going to be, um, and it's the same with the back one there totally intact um, and it's still got the original screws you know the torque screw so um, I've looked in the expansion there's nothing in there but um, anyway I'll just get the lid off now so what I need for this is a Torx um, it's a shame really to destroy these warranty seals but I can't get in there any other way really unless I try and steam these off but it's not going to work I don't think really um, but yeah you need a Torx um, screwdriver to get inside these so uh, I'll just get this lid off I think it's one two three um, and then you've got these three screws on the back here, one, two, three. So there we go, we're in there now, um, disconnect the keyboard so you just, just pulls off uh, and you should be able to lift this out. And then this shielding, you just need to bend these uh, little twists, there's only a few, I think there's three here and then there's one uh, in the back corner here and obviously you've got some more and you can see there's some more torque screws. Um, various places and there's a couple that are holding that up. The shield is nice, uh, there's barely a mark on that, just a bit of corrosion just over here but it's looking pretty clean. So don't forget to set the floppy drive out as well, you've got a screw supporting it just there and then there's three screws um, underneath here. So once you've got those screws out you can you should be able to lift it a little bit, pull it forward and then disconnect the ribbons, uh, the ribbon cable, the IDC cable here and the power. Right, well I've got the lid off now, so first uh, impressions of the board, this is very clean, um, very little going on sort of that side of the board really, but as soon as you get to the battery this is exactly what I expected, but uh, it's not too bad to be fair, um, there's definitely some corrosion there, I'm guessing there's going to be a couple of tracks eaten away, um, you can see this, you know sort of around this area here, some of these resistors, some of the tracks there, certainly the tracks that are just around this bit here, this is typically what usually happens on these where they get damaged and this, there is some corrosion around this chip here so mm, I have to remove that, uh, probably a good idea anyway actually to remove that, uh, sorry that chip there, a um, little bit of corrosion around this side again not uncommon but it seems you know superficial apart from maybe around this bit here where it looks it looks pretty bad, um, sorry here, um, but the other interesting, interesting thing I spotted, well, you can see this, is this mark on the cable here now, I'm not sure whether that's something that's dripped through the case. Um, I'm going to have to clean up some cotton bud, see what happens, but it could well be that that wire has burnt out because of perhaps some corrosion, perhaps something under the previous fault. And that's an interesting point to make with these 500 pluses and 500s, well, probably 500 pluses actually, not 500s, where you've got this battery. Um, it's not uncommon to pick up a 500 plus and think, ah, oh, it's just going to be the battery. But you've got to remember that what you know typically what people have done in the past with these is when it goes faulty they've stuck it in storage, um, so it's entirely feasible. There's another fault with this, just as there was with my other 500 plus that I picked up, and then it's been put into storage. The battery's leaked, and caused a secondary damage effectively. Um, so there you go. There could be two faults. It might not just be a case of cleaning this up and making sure the tracks are repaired. There may well still be another fault, and if that is. Um, damage there from the cable, that particular wire, you know, overheating, burning out or something, then yeah, I'm suspecting something wrong with Gary, something wrong with one of the CIAs, um, possibly even a power um, thing on here, you know, there could be more damage than I'm thinking, but I don't know, we'll clean that up and I'll see what's what. Right, well I've cleaned that cable up with a bit of isoprop there, and, and you can see where my thumb is there. Um, still tiny sound a bit dirty but it is just muck, um, yeah there's muck that's just leaked through. So yeah, I'm going to start uh, by taking the case, taking this out now, it should just lift out actually, uh, might need to, how you do this now, 
Um, yeah, it's clipped in down here. Once you move that clip out of the way, then I think the whole lot should just lift out. There you go. Um, you can get it in. There we go. So uh, it's now out of the plastic bit. And to, in order to get the shielding off the bottom to be able to desolder that battery, um, you need to remove all of these hex screws on all the ports all the way along. So there's quite a few there to do. Uh, it's going to take me a few minutes to do that. The board is now separated from the shielding. Um, so you can get you a bit of a close up of that area around there. And if we look underneath, um, you see there's no damage there, it's not leaked underneath and it, there was no signs of it on the shielding or the case so it seems to have been fairly well contained to the local area there so before I do anything else with this now uh, I'm going to just treat that area with a bit of uh, vinegar before I start to try and desolder that battery uh, I'm anticipating it's going to be a, could be a bit tricky so let's just uh, try and clean up this area here. I'll inspect this uh, closely with the magnifier after uh, and check continuity these traces but um, first thing I really is just to try and neutralise some of this acid. I have to admit this is not as bad as I've seen. I've seen some pretty um, horrendous acid damage to some of these but that said it can look superficial and then when you start cleaning it all off the tracks underneath you realize they're pretty much gone um, that might be the case with this it looks like the, certainly where the cotton bud is there now you know that's looking a pretty suspicious area to me in regards uh, the damage um, gonna do this yourself uh, as I mentioned in a few videos lint free cotton buds are better to use really for this kind of thing um, just because they don't start, you don't get strands of cotton coming off, sticking onto things nearby. Right, I'm gonna have a go at getting that battery off now. I'm not gonna clean it up too much at this stage. I want to get the battery out of the way first before I start giving it a good going over. Right, so the iron's heated up now. Um, what I'm gonna do before I do anything is just get some sort more solder onto these battery contacts. Uh, if I can find them, there they are. So. Using solid with flux here. Um, right, that one's going to be a problem because there's a massive earth plane there. A bit of extra solder there, I didn't mean to get on the board. Right, okay. I'm going to try and pull it from the other side at the same time as heating. I'll do the, the plus, I think these are probably the plus contacts first. Um, Yeah, I can feel it moving just gradually. Just move it one way and move it the other way a little bit. One way, the other way. There we go, it's come off on the other side. And then this one here, which is on the earth plane. Oh, I just presume it's the earth ground. I need to heat that for a prolonged period of time, really. Just, especially with this cheap 15 watt iron. Could get my desoldering station onto this. I can feel it moving now, it's starting to free up. There we go, it's come out. So, if I turn this over, you can look at the board now. Just move this into shot. There you go. So, you can see what we're left with, and there's the battery. Let's get it out of the way. I think now we've done that, I'll just get a bit more isoprop onto there and uh, see if we can clean up that area well, you can see it there's some blue these blue bits here that's like it's where this it's reacted with the solder that was uh, on there and it's or uh, well, the wire in some places um, just goes a funny color I'd be amazed if this works, I really will. It would probably be one of the first times I've seen uh, one of these just work with no corrective action at all, you know. Um, 
rather than just removing the battery. I'm just going to get the wire brush onto here with a bit of isoprop as well, just because some corrosion is pretty heavy on some of those pins there. Strictly speaking, the be best way to do this really is to replace, remove and replace these chips. But I'm just going to see, I'm going to see what really needs to be done um, on this before I do anything. You can see there why it's useful to use a wire brush because that's you visit, you know becoming slightly visible now. You can see underneath the acid has actually got through the um, solder mask there, and it's it's kind of a bit corroded. Um, so it is you know it is important to get rid of the rust, despite the fact you lose some of the silk screen and you do lose a bit more of the solder mask. Um, with this approach where you've got the corrosion there. This is the only real way, I guess, to, to, to clean up that area and to get rid of the underlying corrosion. You've just got to be careful you don't do more damage to the board, uh, you damage more traces than potentially are already damaged, but that's that's not so bad for the most part. I just need to get some vinegar on it, clean up the solder contacts and things. Um, might need to remove some of these components as well. Um, typically you end up having to remove these this row here and remove these here, remove this chip but I will need to take out the um, stuff camera here, Gary, in a minute and just have a look at the socket. It looks like the pins, you know, from looking sort of side on to the underneath the, the uh, socket there, looks like the corrosion's not got that, you know, it's not affected Gary at all, but um, looks can be deceptive, you'd be amazed. I've seen, when you get a, you know, a scenario like this where this battery leaks, you wouldn't expect it, but I've seen corrosion go as far as the, 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 the CIA up here um, and Denise as well. Um, yeah, the battery is located here. You wouldn't expect it, but I've seen that happen. Um, where somehow it manages to get, I don't know, it's because it's a, you know, some of the acid foot becomes a vapor and it spreads that way. But it seems to be on, you get it on the earth contacts on some of the chips that are, can be quite considerable distance away from where the uh, corrosion is located. Yeah, I think that 74 LS244 is going to have to come off there. Um, we'll see. The other problem you've got with this is this, you know, the pretty fine traces as well um, all around this area. So it doesn't take very much corrosion to create your problems really. Right, so what we're getting here now, um, as you see the green light comes on there and after about a second you just get a black screen. Um, nothing, no signs of any activity um, there at all. The interesting thing is, I tried it without the ROM because you'd expect without a ROM you probably get like a red screen type thing. You'd certainly expect some flashing going on here. Um, the fact that nothing's going on makes me think that there's no clock or something. The CPU, you know, it's just not tempting to boot at all. Um, now, yeah, there could be some damage around here. I've had a good look inspection wise. Um, some of the traces look dark, so it's, you know, uh, until I actually start doing continuity tests, I'm not going to know. But one thing I just did quickly did is because these chips have never been removed before, and there was quite a significant amount of crip che uh, chip creep when you, you push them down they clicked in I thought I'm going to reseat them all so I'm just about to do the uh, Agnes yeah so I've got my uh, extractor here so that just goes, I'll switch it off first and just make sure that it's right um, just goes into those little holes there and you push it down make sure it's underneath and just gradually pull it and just pull one, you know lift, pull it one way, pull it the other way just a little bit you don't want to damage the socket but at the same time you don't want to slip off with these cheap tools like this and scratch the chip or chip the chip um, but yeah, beyond that, after reseating that, if I'm still getting no um, no indications of anything at all regards to diagnostics with the keyboard lights there, then um, I'm going to just, I will do some continuity next and uh, just make sure all these traces are okay. Right, we're back here now. Um, I've replaced a trace there, you can see that black wire. Um, 
The other thing I've done is clean up all of the points on the, these components here and on these components here, as well as that cap. Um, you've got to use some good quality flux. I use the chip quick um, stuff and um, I solder the container flux as well and heat the point there. After you've cleaned it up, and, you know, you've got to scrape it with something really because the solder, it, it does what happened to the, um, you know, if you watch my Neo Geo Pocket um, color repair video, it's the same thing that's happened with the, the batteries on that where the solder sort of turns to like a crystalline sort of thing, it's, it disintegrates. It's, there's no solder left on the joints. It looks like there is, but it isn't. It just disintegrates when you scrape it with a little, tip, you know, something sharp. So that's what I've done. Is you know, I scraped some of the tracks off here to be able to trace them and to see what was going where. There's definitely that missing track. There's another missing track related to. I think it's pin nine of the bottom row of these here, which is for the expansion ram. I'll need to put a trace on that, uh, fix on that next. I've left that one out deliberately because I knew that that wouldn't be required to boot the thing. It's just for connecting to the expansion ram. So I'll test the expansion ram a little bit more thoroughly later. Um, but I just want to give this a try now, so I mean, I've got everything connected up here in a bit of an ad hoc state. Uh, I shouldn't be doing this on carpet. If you're going to do this yourself, you're better off doing it on a table. So, you know, you don't want static really, but uh, I've done plenty of Amigas on this carpet before and never had a problem. Um, personally, right, so here we go. Um, I'll switch it on. See what happens. Green light. No errors flashing light there from the floppy. Oh, white screen. And I think it's booting. Yeah, now it's black and white because I'm using the um, AV out of here. I've not got modulator at the moment, it's in storage. But uh, the main thing is I've got sound um, and that seems to be working. So I'll just set the tripod up here. Well, that seems to be working. I'm going to do a little bit more work on this just to test the continuity of, you know, just follow some of the traces there just to make sure there are no more damaged traces. There's certainly the one for the expansion port I'm aware of, um, so I'll do that one next um, and then perhaps retest some of these games once I've uh, just confirmed. Right, I'll try to get a close in now. Um, I've done all the clean up work here. I don't know how well this is going to focus. It's not, um, you might notice that the solder's not perfect. I get a better result by removing these components and completely replacing them. Um, but the connections are good there, that's the main thing. Um, and it's the same with those. Those aren't those are a bit better actually, those were easier to do. But these ones here were a bit tricky and you can see I've got a very, very short wire there to fix um, that was what the extension expansion ramp uh, wire I mentioned. It actually comes all the way down here, runs like right next to this connection just about the ninth pin on the bottom of there, but it, it, the brake was right next to the um, the pad. So I managed to fix that with a very, very short wire, and there's the, the, the wire that um, was causing the black screen to start with. Um, the rest of it seems okay, you know, the chips there's cleaned up pretty well, there's a little bit of corro just corrosion on one of the pins. Um, you can see that just a little bit there, ideally you should remove that chip. If, there was, if the damage was worse, I had three or four, five damage traces and there was more acid around here, I think I'd remove this chip, and it's the same with the Gary. Um, when I did the previous, five, I've done another one of these 500s in the past, 500 plus, sorry. Um, and there was a bit of corrosion here, and as a result of that, I took the socket off. And it was the same with the CIA, one or two of the pins here on the CIA um, needed doing. So um, you've got to sort of socket and see really, and, and, and I guess it's going to be on a case by case basis, it varies depending on where the acid's gone, uh, exactly what damage it's done. But you can see here where I've, um, it's useful just to scratch off with like the probe of a multimeter or something, these, these traces at various points, and then you can trace uh, using continuity, you know, um, but it's pretty hard to see. Um, there are prints, you know, close-ups of this board, you know, without the damage online, so it's worth having a look uh, for one of those, really. Um, all of this, the, 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 these bits of copper I've scratched off and the damage here is, um, as well, can be covered up with uh, some solder mask paint. I've actually got some green solder mask paint that's the same colour as this. So at some point when I've rigorously tested this, make sure there's no more broken traces, I'll paint over, as I did with my last 500 plus, paint over these damaged areas with uh, some solder mask paint, including that trace there. But uh, yeah, you know, that, that cap, you know, the, the, pit, the connection there doesn't look so correct, clever. I might redo that again. But it is making a good connection. I've tested on continuity and stuff, and this. Um, it's okay. But, uh, yeah, the main thing is it's working now, so I'm quite pleased with that. Um, thanks a lot, Mum and Dad. Uh, that was the best £3 you've ever spent. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.
Right, now I've got the 500 plus working, I thought I'd give the floppy drive a clean, so in order to do that, uh, you've got to take that screw out the back there, so let's just do that. It's a pretty small screw and they're usually stuck in quite firmly. There we go, that's out. Um, then you've got these two screws on the sides there as well. Right, so the mechanism then should slide out like that to the back. Shielding things just slides off backwards from like that. So what you want to do is uh, rub the heads there with some uh, nice prop. Don't be worried about sort of just bending them up a bit like that. Sorry, the lighting's not so good in here. Um, this time I know you can see that just about. And you just want to put some pressure with some uh, cotton bud with ice prop on it. Yes, yeah, so make sure you get any bits of uh, muck and fluff and stuff um, uh, out of these, these two switches here. These are for the, um, I think, right protect and density um, checks or something. I think one of them might be the disc change actually. And you just, want, you just, just you know, shove cotton bud in there, just get any bits of uh, dust and stuff out of the mechanism. That's not too bad now, it's pretty clean actually. And it's already clean underneath, there's nothing really to do there. No surface metal electrolytics on this particular model. 